Welcome to Fueled by Intentions, sponsored by Bynum's Business Solutions, where the right fit is made simple. We specialize in tips, tools, and strategies designed to help you achieve your financial health so that you can take control of how you spend your money so that you can spend more time with your family, friends, and doing the things you love. So let's jump right into the video. discuss Chris and Paige who is featured on season 12 of Married at First Sight. This is a spoiler alert so if you don't want to know the spoiler please stop the video now. What I want to explore is what Paige's Christian response should be when she finds out that Chris's ex-fiance may be pregnant. That's what's going on in the blogs. They are saying that in a clip, we see Chris says, oh, I think she's pregnant. I can't believe she's pregnant. And the blogs are saying that the person that he is speaking of is his ex fiance. So I wanna explore what Paige's Christian response should be to this question. So let's talk about it. Let's start off by talking about Chris. On the show so far, we're up to episode two and we haven't even seen Chris and Paige actually get married when the season, when the show last le left off, because we're on, we've seen up to season two, they were getting ready to, Chris was at the altar and Paige was standing in the wings, getting ready to proceed in with her dads. So that's kind of like where we left off. From my opinion, why this is really interesting to me is because this is the first time that I've seen on Married at First Sight or um, any show, most shows really highlight the Christian values that both Paige and Chris have. This is the first time I've seen Married at First Sight truly highlight the Christian values of a couple that has been on the show. I do believe there has been other couples who have been Christian. For example, I believe that Deanna and Greg, I believe they're Christians. I've seen some things since they've been off the show to, sh to indicate that they may be Christians. And sometimes you see that they say that their faith means a lot to them, but you never see that as a major part of their storyline. And I, uh, maybe it's just the way I'm looking at it, but I believe that Chris and Paige their storyline has a lot to do with their faith. So let's talk about Chris first, which is very interesting because I think that they're painting him to be a villain. Like he says things that are just obnoxious and the sound bites that um, you hear for, from him. And so I actually did a little more research on Chris because some people are saying that Chris was scouted out for the show, that the show seeked him out and asked him to be a part which I don't know if that's true or not. I mean, I can't even imagine, like would you allow somebody to seek you out and then you legally be married at first sight? Like, I, but I don't know, that could have happened. But there are other things out there about Chris. So I did look at some interviews that he's done before married at first sight. He says that he's a restaurant, he owns a restaurant on married at first sight. Some of the sound bites that we've hear, we hear it's actually a subway, but he has been interviewed by quite a number of people because he is the youngest African American with a subway franchise in the city of Atlanta. And when he obtained his franchise, they made a really big deal about him being the youngest African American who owns a subway franchise in that city. So I actually listened to a lot of the things that he said during those interviews and I thought that he was very, um, very entertaining actually. And uh, I mean, he was very motivating. And from those, I actually believe that Chris and Paige 
I can see why they would be a good match. So let's talk about Chris. And many times in the interviews, he said yes ma'am and no ma'am throughout the whole interview. And I am originally from Texas. I was raised in Texas. And that is just a sign of respect when you say yes ma'am and no ma'am. So I thought that, that he was very respectful. I really do like his family. They've shown his family on Married at First Sight, his grandparents. You know, they say that he's from a Christian family. They show him meeting with his pastor, which I think is just awesome. I don't believe that I know a lot of African-American men who have a mentorship like that where they will go to their pastor and ask them about different things that are going on in their lives. And it appears that his pastor, like that that wasn't for TV, like that's what he really does. Because when I saw a video of him opening his franchise and his pastor was there and it seemed like he gave um, respect for his pastor in, in helping him you know, in that endeavor too. So I really believe that he does, that is really his mentor that he goes to his pastor. One thing that I thought was very interesting when I listened to his interviews is on the show, it makes it sound like he left being a pastor because he does say he was a preacher. I don't know if he said a pastor, but I know he said he was a preacher and he left the ministry because he didn't feel like it made him enough money. Now, I do believe he said that because they can only make you say what you really say. But what I found interesting is, is when I listened to one of the interviews that he had done, he indicated that he was discouraged from being a preacher because he was rejected by the Christian community. Now, I don't know what that rejection means. Maybe he feels like he was rejected because they didn't sponsor his event. Evidently, he put, put on a conference and he said the conference was successful, but he felt rejected. So I don't know if that's rejected in money or attendance or I don't know, they didn't like his style of preaching. I really don't know. He actually went to Moody Bible Institute, which is a highly respected Bible seminary college. So I was really, really impressed with that. Another thing that I thought he showed vulnerability on is that he has been in the military. I believe he has been in the army. And he talked about how when he was in the army, he was seen as weak because, you know, he kind of like couldn't take it. And he was in a lot of, well, he expressed one embarrassing situation where he was trying to get sympathy and the sergeants were kind of really hard on him. And from that, he was teased by the other, um, his military buddies in the military. So I thought that showed a lot of vulnerability because a lot of people, you know, they, they wouldn't really normally admit that. He did talk about how he was homeless. It's interesting because he said he was homeless for three months in like two or three videos. And then I watched another video and he said he was homeless for five or six months. So I don't know which one I'm more leaning towards the three because he said that more times and that was closer to the time it actually happened. But I really admire him for that because he was homeless by choice, really, because he could have went home and, you know, went back to his home or stay with his parents. And when his grandparents found out, they actually said, hey, son, come home. And he was like, no, I need to figure this out for myself. And that just shows me that he has a lot of tenacity and he will go the distance. To, you know, he doesn't, he will go through the hard time for a bigger goal. So I think that that is a very good quality to have in a husband that he would show that kind of um, just go get him in order to have a bigger goal. He said that when he was homeless, that he slept in his car, he would shower at Planet Fitness, he put his clothes in the cleaners and give them out every day or you know so many days and changing his car and stuff like that to me that shows a person of humility and who is humble also he said he wrote this mega business plan and he actually was able to invest in subway because he was looking for other investment opportunities and he wrote a plan and got um, some investors invested in that plan and i really admire that because a lot of us we don't plan, we're not intentional about our future and especially African-American men to be able to articulate it. He talked about other business endeavors that he wanted to get into and not just Subway. He was gonna try to flip houses and he had this big billboard plan. So he is a man with a plan, 
Like who would not want to have a husband who has a plan for your life and for your future? Also, I really did um, like that, you know, he, he bonded with his grandparents. They seemed like a really big, big part of his life. And I really like the advice that his grandmother gave him who said, don't focus on looks. And she's like, you know, I don't look the same way when I got married. You know, you really need to look deeper into a person. And so I hope that he does that. And I think that that was great advice um, from his grandmother. One thing that I thought was interesting is that his grandfather recently passed away. And I guess he made a post on Instagram and was just saying that the, some, that's some of the last memories and footage that he has with his grandfather. So if you are a Christian or if you pray, please pray for the family that the Lord would just comfort them, you know, as they grieve the loss of someone who was very special to the family. And not only for Chris, but he said on the show that his grandparents, I believe they have been married for more than 40 years. So I cannot even imagine what his grandmother is, is going through, that she lost her husband and possibly it appeared that they were really, really really good friends as well so pray for the family that you know the lord would just really take care of them in their um, time of need and time of grief now let's talk about Paige. i don't really know a lot of personal things i couldn't really find her on the internet or anything like that so most of the things i'm going to talk about Paige is things that we actually saw in um the last two episodes of married to first sight it of uh, married at first sight one thing that Paige said is when her brother was talking to her about marriage and her deal breakers, she said that her deal breaker would be if somebody was not God fearing or if somebody did not have, um, did not want children. So she said her deal breakers was somebody who was not God fearing and somebody who did not want children. She also said that, she also said that this was an answer to prayer. She said that God had manifested this for her and she was going to claim it as so. Before she went down the aisle, she indicated that she was heard the Holy Spirit and that the Holy Spirit was speaking to her. Also, when she got the infinity necklace, he gave her a little infinity necklace and um, she thought that was another sign because she has an infinity tattoo. She thought that that was another sign that they should be together. One thing I will say about that is she put on his infinity necklace with her necklace. And I really wish she would have taken off her necklace and just wore the necklace that he gave her down the aisle. I, I really feel like the necklaces, like they were both kind of like similar in size. So I don't think it would have messed up the look that she was going for. And maybe she did later. I don't know. I'm actually going to look for that next week. But I would really hope that she just met him with the necklace that, that he gave her on. I thought it was a really, really, really nice gift. But my question is, what should Paige do when she finds out that he may have this ex-fiance pregnant? because a lot of times, you know, her thing, what she's been saying has been manifested by God, God answered prayers and, you know, all of this, that sometimes when we find out a piece of the puzzle that we were not really looking for, then we're ready to jump ship. So my, I, my hope and prayer, I really should say my hope, not prayer, because it's already happened, whatever happened, happened. But my hope is that this is not a deal breaker for Paige and that if she really believes that this is manifested by God, he answered her prayers, she's been led by the Holy Spirit, that she just walks that thing out. Now, I really won't talk a lot about Chris in this because if Chris decides to leave Paige and make a family with the girl that he um, has pregnant, then Paige, there's nothing Paige can do. You know, you can't make somebody stay with you. But I hope she does not initiate it. And it's really interesting because I was asking a church member, and it's he's a guy, what did he think about it? And he said that Chris should leave Paige and go back to the ex-fiance because they have a kid together and raise the kid, you know, as a family. And I, I just, my thing is that 
If you believe that God had manifested this for you, then it's not a surprise that a kid is in the mix because God is not surprised. God is not surprised. God is not surprised. No matter what happens in our life, God is not up there going, oh my gosh, look what happened. Like he already knows. And if he has this plan for you, then it's going to work out in his plan. Now, don't get me wrong. I think that you know, we should know that our actions, when we are not in line with the perfect will of God, that sometimes our actions affect others. So if Chris was having sex, unprotected sex, well, any sex actually, unmarried with his ex-girlfriend and it produces this child and now it's affecting Paige because now this is his wife, consequences reach far beyond not only us, it spreads into other people. But for Paige, I really hope that she stays. And one thing that that brought to mind for me is Romans 8, is Romans 8, 28 and 29. Verse 28 says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. And 29 says, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestine to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. And to me, that really means that all things work for the good of those who love the Lord. And that good is for us to conform to God's image. And we never know what God is going to take us through in order to conform to his image. Sometimes that takes a little pruning and prodding for us to become who God would have us to be. And I feel like it, I mean, everything is just not perfect. And if the Lord, if she believes that the Lord manifested this for her, he answered her prayers. He's not surprised that a baby is in the mix. He really is not. And sometimes God does things in our lives in unconditional, unconventional ways to help us to conform to the likeness of him, to help us grow in our faith and more to him. And I really believe that if she believes that this is manifested by God and she got to the aisle and she said, I do, you know, some things, you know, the Lord, then that is the Lord's will. It may not have been his perfect will because sometimes we get confused on that, but it's at least, let's just say at least his permissive will because he, he allowed it to happen. He could have let any number of things happen and that would not have been so. So if she believes that this is really from the Lord and you know she's either in his perfect will, permissive will, I don't know, I'm not trying to say either one, but it happened so he allowed it to happen he's going to see her through. And one good example that I think shows us in the Bible of this is I just look at Abraham and this is so funny because this is such a new revelation for me just recently because we see the evolution evolving of Abraham. And one thing, two things that I like to point out, well, one thing, big thing that happened twice, but for Abraham, when him and Sarah was traveling and, you know, they left for the famine, they went to another country, he t um, another area, and he told Sarah to pretend like she was his sister because he was scared that the men were going to think she was so beautiful and then kill him. And then they took Sarah and he knew that they were going to take Sarah and they were going to have sexual relationship with her because, you know, he knew that was going to be the plan and he had her go along with him anyway in this plan. And when he did it, the Lord rescued her from them, revealed it to them. They gave her back to him and then they blessed him. And then in another situation, the same thing happened again. You know, they God rescued her. He revealed it to them. And the people that he lied to, you know, gave him money and gave him jewels and, you know, gave him pride. And that has always bothered me that I'm just like really Abraham like you here you did lie and all scheme and all this you were deceptive he was deceptive 
And I never could understand why, why would the Lord bless, why would the Lord bless him? Like, why would he bless him with riches and stuff when he was deceptive? And then recently, I got to the story, well, read the story again. You know, you read it a thousand times, but the Lord just reveals more and more to you. And it's the story about Isaac and how he was going to sacrifice Isaac. And the Lord says, you know, are you going to sacrifice your one and only son? And then he took his son and he told him, you know, tied him down and really was going to kill him. And in his mind, he had reason that the Lord could raise him from the dead if he wanted to. You know, and I just see that as the evolution of Abraham's faith, where we see in the beginning that he didn't trust God as much because Abraham was a righteous man. You know, that's why the Lord took him and used him and used his family and stuff like that. But we see the evolution of his faith because of the circumstances that he encountered, you know, so... And then, you know, he sacrificed, and, and I believe that's why the test came, because we see that Abraham failed and failed and failed in his trust of God, because he was trying to do it himself. He had sex with Haggai and had Ishmael, because they could not figure out how the Lord was going to allow them to be descendants of this whole generation when Sarah couldn't have kids. You know, they did that on their own. You know, but then he did those other two things on his own. But then we see when he we get here that he tr totally trusted the Lord and was willing to give up everything for the Lord in order to, you know, sacrifice his son. And I feel like that's just an evolution of our faith and how the Lord takes us through different things to get us where we need to be in our faith. So I really feel that if Paige just says, you know what? I believe that this, you know, the Holy Spirit spoke to me, God manifested this, you know, that she would just stay and stick it out with him and support him through this journey and, you know, just see what God would have for her. So I'm really interested because it, it's exciting to me that they are highlighting the faith of this young couple in such um, a, a magnet, magnitude, uh, you know, just highlighting it and, and just just highlighting it, I guess is the only word that I really can use to describe it. Because although I don't think that we're perfect in, as Christians, and I don't expect them to be perfect even as they live out this marriage because relationships are hard, but that they would put their faith out there and you know say that I am a believer and this is my life. And if you're going to fuel, film me, you gotta get some of this footage because this is what I do all day. I live, I live out my faith in who Christ is. And I think that that's probably a reason that they were matched. It's really interesting to me too, because he is saying a lot about looks and everything. And, and on the internet, he's getting a lot of flack for that. But Brianna, she talks about looks too. She wants her husband to be handsome and all of this kind of thing. So I'm really interested to see what he thinks about her and if he thinks that she is beautiful, because I think that beauty is in the eye of the beholder. But I really believe that both Chris and Paige, because they are darker African-Americans, and a lot of times we as dark African-Americans are not seen as the standard of beauty. You know, you can go either, people can go either way. I am glad now that society has just taken a turn and we are considered darker African-Americans are seen more as, as beauty and, and all what we have in terms of our African features. So I'm really interested. I hope that he just finds her very attractive. I think she is just beautiful. And I hope that they really gel. I think that they really would make a good couple. It's interesting because he said that he wanted a submissive freak. And she said that she wanted to be a submissive wife. And she talked about the whole sex thing, how she is open um, in terms of sexual fluidity and what, what she experiences in her relationship. So I think that they would be compatible there. He wants a lot of children. She wants children. He wants children soon. It seems like she wants children soon too. He wants to be a powerhouse and, you know, be very successful in his career. She is successful in her career and she's very ambitious. She bought a house at a very young age. He bought a restaurant at a very, very young age. 
So I think that they really can make a really good couple. Um, I am going to hope that they are gonna be one of the success couples. One thing I do think about Chris in his interview, he talked about he had three major relationships in his 20s, and he seems like he's very committed when he's in relationships. And we do know that he just got out of being engaged three months ago. But to me, that just says that he is a hopeless romantic and that he falls in love easily and he has a desire to be married. Because he said that he only knew the girl a couple of months and then he proposed to her. So to me, he does want to be married and maybe he falls in love very quickly. So I hope that he falls in love with Paige um, very quickly and that they're just a happy couple. I hope that they continue to show them living out their faith you know, just living out their faith and just, you know, she said on Unfiltered, which is really interesting because on the previous show, she said that she wanted on see, on episode number one, she said that she was gonna be, she wanted to be a submissive wife and they actually, the girls actually asked her questions about it. And then on Unfiltered, she said that she was not a submissive wife. So, I mean, there may be some tension in their relationship as to why she said later on that she's not a submissive wife, only because um, maybe, because when she said she was submissive in episode one, we know she didn't meet and she doesn't know who her husband is. But we know when she filmed Unfiltered that she's met and they've had some experiences together. So maybe she kind of changed her opinion um, personally, I believe that the Bible, as Christians, we are to be submissive. And some people see that as, you know, taboo or a strange word or whatever. But, you know, I think that in the Christian context of what it's meant, it's a good thing. I'm not sure if my husband would think I'm submissive. I think I am. I don't know if he would think I am, though. So, um, you know, two different perspectives of what that might be. But I really do hope that... Chris and Paige make it. I hope that she just trusts God if she really believes that the Lord has manifested this for her. And if you want to explore more about Romans 8 and 28 and how 28 and 29 is connected together, I would refer you to Pastor, I think his name is Pastor Paul Piper's video. He does look, look in the book look in the book and he does a very good explanation of, of scripture and that's one of the passages that he explores. So I guess my encouragement to you and myself would be is where is God calling us to live out our faith or um, enhance our faith for him and do we have a situation that may be unconventional that God is using to help us increase our faith in him? You know, what is the good? The good, are we conforming to God's image by trusting him in whatever he brings our way? So just wanted to have a little fun with you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, please like and subscribe and share with others. And we'll see you next time. But until then, live with intention. Live intentionally. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.